50 miles off the coast of Florida. Across the turquoise waters, there is a storm brewing. Its force could change the landscape, altering the world around it. It's happened before, and it will happen again. But I'm not talking about a hurricane. I'm talking about music. This is the birthplace of Rake and Scrape, Junkanoo, and Goombe. This is where rhythm and rhyme collide. This is the Bahamas. You may think you've heard everything, but the world is full of surprises. And when you're hanging out with musicians, nothing is off limits. Is this what you guys do every weekend? Every night. <laughs> every night. <laughs> my name is Jacob Edgar. Music is my life, and life is short. So crank up the volume and let the voyage begin. You know the expression, big things come in small packages. And that's certainly true in the Bahamas. A country with a population of less than half a million spread out over hundreds of separate islands. But when people come to visit, they always bring a little bit of the Bahamas home with them. Oh my God. So good. It could be just memories or photos, a tacky t-shirt from a souvenir shop, or it could be a rhythm, a melody, a song. Music travels, and this little country has a loud voice, and it's one that carries. On this episode of Music Voyager, we're going to be hitting the streets and looking for the next big superstars of Bahamian music, and maybe of the world. I start my exploration in Nassau with the Bahamian musician Fred Ferguson. So, so here we are. This is downtown Nassau. It surely is. You want to show me around? We can talk a little I bit. I will do my best. Fred's career has straddled numerous musical eras and genres. He was a member of the Baja Men, one of the Bahamas' most successful bands. And he's an in-demand funk, soul, and disco guitarist and producer. We walk to the Straw Market on the world-famous Bay Street. So what do you have to drink? I have the authentic Bahamian Gombe punch. Ooh, that sounds good. Here Gombe it is. Punch. It's in a bottle and it's a can. You can't go wrong with a um, soda that has a face on it. It turns out Fred looks to Bahamian roots music for his biggest inspiration. Joseph Spence is my ultimate folk guitar hero. He developed a style that has resonated around the world. He brought a fire to this thing that still behooves all of us. I try to play that, I tell you now. I play it nothing like what he does. What he did with a thumb and two fingers and that drop D thing and all the rhythmic stuff that goes on between it is, is I can't explain that stuff. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> So as a child, you grew up listening to this very traditional music. It, while it's inspired by tradition, it's also pretty contemporary. Ronnie Butler came Tell me along. Who Ronnie Butler is. Ronnie Butler came along and became the pop rake and scraper. The progression continued through Baha Man and Dr. Off and others. We, we, we've tried to move the Junkanoo sound forward. 
the next generation of KB and, and DMAC, there are still some persons who are experimenting with the sound. So how do, how do people know about these artists? Well, we have lots of radio stations. Every now and then, a popular song will rise to the top and it'll override everything else that's out there. As Fred and I walk through downtown Nassau, we hear tropical melodies wherever we go. It's clear this city has music in its soul. You know, there's an energy here, Jacob. There is an energy. When you walk this, you can feel it. You know, it's, it's something that the Bahamas just, especially Nassau part of the Bahamas, if you enter the islands, it'll be a different energy, but it'll still be that Bahamian, exciting, you know, yet peaceful, Kind of energy. And always with a little bit of music in the background. Always. Well, see, this is my friend coming up to the... somebody you know? Yeah, of course. I, I think I know them all. Well, look, I brought my little Portuguese braguinha here. What's a good so, local song? I heard when you pulled up here, you were listening to some... Andre Toussaint. Andre Toussaint. Yeah, yeah. And it's called Calypso Island. Oh, I love that song. Yeah, I saw uh, you dancing to it and then you pulled up. <laughs> uh, we'll reconstruct straight. Two, three, and Calypso. You do it, like you natives. The island boys do. <laughs> <laughs> Completely, Jacob. You're so cool, man. So <laughs> no, cool. man, you're cool. <laughs> you're the man. You're, you're the cool. Man. I take Fred's advice and scan the local radio. One station in particular piques my interest. Hello there, how are you? My name is Malcolm McKay, and this is Island Classics. A wise man once said, to predict the future, he must first understand the past. So I reach out to Malcolm McKay, who invites me to his house. Take a look at those. Oh my goodness, look at this. These are classics. Blind Blake. I hope to learn something about the golden era of Bahamian music in the 50s and 60s, when the Calypso craze was at its height, and numerous nightclubs of Nassau rocked with the sounds of a music known as goombe. So it's interesting, you know, they market these as calypso. The Bahamas had a different sound from true. Goombe. Goombe, exactly. So why were they calling this calypso? Because no one from the United States, Canada, or Europe could make the distinction. So what is the difference? What is the distinction between, you know, this, this goombe music, as you um, call it, and it's calypso? It's a beat. Uh, it's based on the goombe drum. Mm -hmm. I love this music. You clearly love this music. Why? Just nostalgic, or is there something about it? It was just good quality music. The musicians in this country were very high end, and a lot of them to this day have emigrated to the United States. The most recent is Baja Men. Of course. Right. And they're Bahamian. Right. I don't think a lot of people realize that. As we pour through Malcolm's enviable collection of vintage Bahamian vinyl, he tells me about the glitz and glamour of this high point in Bahamian music history. A famous nightclub owner, Peanuts Taylor, yes, I've heard of had uh, the Drumbeat Club, and um, he introduced the Kennedys to Martin Luther King in his really? nightclub. But he didn't introduce the Kennedys to Marilyn Monroe. Not that I know. I've never heard that story before. <laughs> By the late 60s, the sun had set on the Goombe era. All that remains of that musical time are worn-out records, some faded photographs, and the nostalgic memories of those who were there to experience its magic in person. In by the 70s, a new sound and style started to take the Bahamas by storm. By the time the Bahamas gained its independence from Britain in 1973, 
local musicians were looking to the black power grooves of American funk, soul, and disco. Some even argue that disco owes its sound to the tropical Junkanoo beats of the Bahamas. Casey and the Sunshine Band, one of the disco era's most successful groups, was originally named Casey and the Sunshine Junkanoo Band. Bahamian bands such as The Beginning of the End and T-Connection charted a number of hits, including the disco classic Funky Nassau. One of the unsung heroes of that time is Jay Mitchell. I was excited to hear Mitchell was going to be performing on Grand Bahama Island, but I was shocked to find him singing alone and unrecognized in a touristy restaurant. Mitchell has been compared to James Brown, Otis Redding, Teddy Pendergrass. And there was a time when he was managed by Michael Jackson's father, Joe. His rare classic vinyl is highly prized by collectors. Probably most of the people, probably all of the people, yeah. they walk in, they hear you playing, and they don't realize what yeah. an amazing talent yeah, they, they have there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, what history you have and how important you are to the music scene in the Bahamas. Yeah. Well, the Bahamians do, but not the tools who walk in. Right. But you know, in the Bahamas, you, you gotta find a pocket to sit in. You gotta so, make your living, too. I learned in life that, that uh, the vibration goes in circles, it moves, it moves. And uh, when you pick what you're gonna do, you wait a while and you ride on that a bit. You, like I said, just like a wave. So you go with the flow. I, I, that's say, what I'm yeah? saying. Just, <laughs> just like on a wave, I just ride. And so, Island style. <laughs> yeah. Waves of Bahamian music have washed up on the shores of the U.S. over the years. For artists like Jay Mitchell, music is an inescapable part of life, something that's been flowing in his veins since he was very young. But I was kind of born with the sounds in me. Yeah. As a little kid, I was uh, about four, four to five. I used to like get the plastic, put it over the can, and make a sound and give it to the guys. Yeah. Give it to the guys to play and I would have an orchestra because I would make some wood Put some so out of anything you could find, strings on the wood, yet. particularly the wood, and, 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 and make an orchestra. Because I always heard sounds in me that uh, I was never able to bring out. There wasn't a technology to bring it. Right. Unaware of the history and talent he represents, people walk past Jay Mitchell singing his heart out on their way to the buffet. In many ways, it's symbolic of the rich culture of the Bahamas that goes unnoticed by most visitors. But away from the tourists, the all-you-can-eat buffet, the cocktail umbrellas, and the drum machines, the true soul of the Bahamas reveals itself. Goodbye, my love. Goodbye, my love. I've got to find someone who will give their heart to me when I give mine. Yeah, I'll I'd like to, I'd like to fly away from here, somewhere, somewhere to some other land. Oh, just how you clip my wings, I will never understand. Oh, it's a hard world we're living in. People get hurt again and again. Make up your mind. You're gonna be weak or you're gonna be strong. Ooh, I can't wait to start again. I'd never forget the lesson I've learned. I'll see you later. Oh, another. Thank you so much. Thank you.
After the 70s, little music from the Bahamas made an impact outside of the country. But that silence was broken in the year 2000, when a group called the Baja Men unleashed the song Who Let the Dogs Out and crossed over to the international pop charts. Even though we are, um, we're mainly doing pop music, the whole sound is based around Junkanoo. While they've always tried to bring the sounds of the Caribbean to the mainstream, they never would have predicted the massive success of their iconic hit. Were you surprised when that song became as big of a hit as it did? Man, if someone had said that to me, I'd have said, no way. Do you feel like that has been the best thing that ever happened to your band or the worst thing that ever happened to your band? Um, to me, it's a double-edged sword. You know, it was <laughs> extremely good, but at the same time, extremely bad. Right. And when I say bad, I mean everything you put out after that, it killed it. And you also have that song as being perhaps one of the most loved and perhaps one of the most hated songs of all time. Yes, too. yes. Hated yeah, because, because of the success. Because it's so popular <laughs> and it's mental glue. You cannot get it out of your head once you start having it in your head. Yes, you're right, because there. I have actually heard people say, if I hear this song one more time. <laughs> But the Baja Men are more than a one-hit wonder. They remain one of the most popular bands in the Bahamas and widely respected for using Bahamian traditions as inspiration for their radio-friendly songs. What's been happening with the Baja Men in the last Rehearsing, 10 years? Rehearsing, getting material together, you know, just preparing ourselves to get back into the studio. I've been partying. <laughs> <laughs> So, Rick, what's your opinion about the music scene in the Bahamas today? Definitely a lot going on. Oh, yeah? Um, it yes. feels active to you? It's it's very active here. Great. Um, the, the most active I've seen in my whole career. You know, it's quite an exceptional sound, and it's not just one sound. Right. You got, got Lake and Scrape, you got Junk, and all these, you know, this, all this whole Gombe thing. I think it's time. Uh-huh. Yeah. I really think it's time, and a group like Bahamen, has been doing this, you know, we've been the catalyst for, for decades. Right. It's just been crazy work for the past two years, uh, believe it or not, and I'm very happy that I took that time to party my, party myself to, <laughs> to party <laughs> one <oblivion>. of my <laughs> <party>. <laughs> I gotta ask this question, guys. Who let the dogs out? Who really let them out? Not again. Oh, no. I mean, it. I, I didn't mean it. I mean, I just had to ask. Well, some questions deserve to go unanswered. But I still wanna find out who is the hottest voice of the new generation? Who is the undiscovered Bahamian talent on the cusp of becoming an international star? It could be Julian Believe, the young singer I hung out with during Junkanoo celebrations. I should probably ask the experts what they think, so I head back to Island FM. Thanks for starting your day right here to hold Bahamian music and culture. Eddie Carter is the program director at the station and hosts his own morning show called The Boil with co-host Sanny. 102.9 FM broadcasting live from our studios right here. He invites me on air to discuss the future of Bahamian music. You mentioned today's artist. Yeah, let me give you, you a quick sample. Uh, what, play me a recommendation. So that's an artist right there called Dylan McKenzie, D Mac, as he's known in the industry. 
DMAC. So that's the second time I've heard that name. The next generation, DMAC. Is it possible I've been on the trail of the next Bahamian superstar this whole time? You hear the sound of that now. If you hear, listen to traditional rake and scrape, you hear a lot of those elements there. Yeah. But you're hearing more of a, a modern sound. It's pumped up. Yeah, it's a, a, that's a good way to say it. It's a pumped up version. Yeah, absolutely. But you still hear the scrape. Absolutely. Like, yeah, and nice. you're seeing that a lot from Bahamian artists today. The guys coming up, like your D Max and all of those. All right. I think it falls on them to take it to that next level. And so, with that advice, I reach out to D Mac, who tells me to meet him at one of his favorite spots. We're going to get some authentic Bahamian music. We're going to get some authentic Bahamian food right here on Port of Ski Dock in the Bahamas. We hit Skinny's restaurant on Potter's Key for some of the freshest conch you can find. I can't yeah. say that looks very appetizing, I'll be honest. Not now. No, but you're going to make it beautiful. I'm make it beautiful. I can tell you've done this a few times. Here we go. Skinny conch salad. Mmm. Ah. Oh yeah, I'm ready to go, man. You just ate the giant snail. <laughs> Where are they? Where are they? Now this one here is the killer right now. When you see this play at any parties in the Bahamas, this is what our music is all about. This is called the Golan Song. It's a story behind it. I'll tell you about it. But, so here it goes now. One, two, three, what's it? Said she promised she gonna marry me. Oh, yeah. She ran away. from DMAC's modern take on Bahamian rake and scrape music that both locals and foreigners love his sound. My thing is all about making it exciting for the younger people. It's about bridging the gap. It's about bringing that connection. The song I sang earlier about Mara de Gaulle, and it's a very old folk tale because a lot of our music is folk story. I, I use the folk tale, brought it into a modern type of beat type of thing, and then use some concept that would attract the younger people. I don't think the old folk tale said I lost my virginity. <laughs> no, the old folk tale wouldn't say that. My virginity. I don't know if the old folk tale would say it in quite that way. But it wouldn't say it that way, but it, meant to say, it means the same thing. Why did you choose to ask us to come here? When, when you're talking about me showing you guys what it is to be a Bahamian, I got to bring you to where it is that I come. So I bring you to a local hangout. We're over, we're at on Porter Ski Dock, where, you know, just over from us is, a, is the big Atlantis hotel that, that we're from. But this is, this is like more of my inspiration point. When I come here, I can sit down, I can play dominoes, I can, I can hear the gossip of the guys and they're talking in the background. And you, it's amazing the amount of things that you hear. And a lot of, of, of my song ideas and concepts come right from out here. Could you imagine waking up in the tropic like this? Could you imagine waking up every morning and you could come and get a scotch conch and a conch salad? Man, paradise. come on, it is paradise, you know? <laughs> now you eat yours, let me, let me, let me see how you're gonna eat yours. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> That's eating gum. That's serious. This is the wimpy, yeah. That's for real men. <laughs> I'm moving up to that. I have to work on it. Here we go. Well, it's the beginning of the end for Music Voyager's visit to the Bahamas. But in many ways, the end is just the beginning. While it's impossible to predict the future, one thing you can definitely count on in the Caribbean is there will be another storm. And don't be surprised if the next Category 5 musician comes from the Bahamas. What's the breaking script? Should have breaking script.
Pressure, pressure. Oh. 